So you know how to sign up for GameServerKings.com. You know how to set up your Rust server, make yourself admin, do a full wipe, do a map wipe, how to run custom maps, how to update your plugins and upload and download them, how to update your server and update UMOD, how to connect with Rust admin, and also how to edit the configurable files that come with UMOD and your server. Hey everybody, welcome to another video. In this video, I wanna be talking about how to use or how to set up a Rust server using a hosting company. So I try not to babble um, too much, but let's go straight in. First of all, what kind of host company should you use? I'm going to be using, like I said, gameserverkings.com, but if you use something else, um, which is of course fine, then there's a big chance it will a big chance it will look kind of the same and i'll explain um i got a list here um comparing rust server hostings and there are a few things that i want to point out if you look at the control panel over here you can see that most of them are using tc admin some of them have custom ones and but a lot of them are using tc admin and if i click on these you can see that they all kind of well it's a different screen they all kind of have the same layout but slightly different if you are used to doing stuff in the files yourself and now you're transitioning to a hosting company there are a few things that are slightly different in the way you edit them but all the steps and all the places of the files are still exactly the same so why gameserverkings.com like i said this is not a sponsored video um i used three other hosting companies before them and all had all individual issues and then I found them on a advertisement from umod.org. I just contacted them, had really good support. I got a server from them and the performance was really, really good. And the pricing is also uh, pretty good. You can see here, if we change it uh, to order everything on the price from the lowest first, that Game Server Kings is one of the cheaper ones, not the cheapest one, as you can see, but there's a uh, five cents difference per slot. And one slot is basically one player. So if you want to have a 100 people server or 100 slot server, um, you will be paying more than if you just want 50 people. Or if you want a really big server with 500 people, I don't even know if Rust officially supports this. This will cost more than having just 50 slots or 50 players. So whenever you see slots, that means players. So if we go to gameserverkings.com, we click on Rust and you can see here, it asks me how many number of players do I want? So those slots that I were just talking about. And you can see here, if I choose 60, it will be for me eight euros or nine euros a month, uh, which is about $12, I think. You can then click on configure server and you can choose how many months. And once again, how many players, the location. So choose a location that makes sense. If you are in Europe, choose something that's close to you. Um, if they don't offer a location that is um, or apply, would make sense for you to play on, then just look for a different hosting. Um, like I said, there's a big chance it will still kind of look the same as here, just slightly different orientation and colors and stuff. Um, so you should still be able to follow along. You can then choose a few add-ons if you want a better CPU or more CPU priority. You can choose some things to make it go faster if you need that. If you don't need it, don't take it in the beginning. I would recommend just getting the basic one if you know you don't need it if you want if you already have a big player base for two three hundred people get the highest one and make sure it works well if you just want to play with your friends you probably don't need this then what kind of uh payment options and this is my email thanks for mitchell for letting me use your email address to do this video i forgot to say that in the beginning so you just choose what you want and then um basically when you make your account you get a thank you message then when you purchase your server you get a thank you for your order and it says we will take a little bit to complete and then here you can click on visit client area this should make you log in if it doesn't you can just at the top here click on client area and then log in and it should still give you this page if you click on servers here on the left and then click on rust server you get all your rust server information so if you are looking at this and you think oh i see a lot of passwords and a lot of um information by the time that this video is uploaded, this complete account will be deleted. So go waste your time. Um, but this allows me to show everything and not have to hide anything. And you can see exactly what I'm doing. So this is my Rust information. This is my FTP information, which once again stands for File Transfer Protocol. 
So we use this in a program like FileZilla, which I will show you guys to have access to our uh, files on the server so we can download them and also upload uh, plugins and stuff like this. Then we have our Archon information, which is for our remote console. And um, we can put this on like a website like Archon.io or a program like Rust Admin to, um, or a app on your phone to basically admin your server while you're not at the server computer. And then we have a TC admin uh, game panel, which we can go to actually edit these files or these properties from our server. So let's do that. I'm going to copy this admin password, which is a pretty safe password, which is good. And I'm just going to remember 10105 and I'm click here on open TC admin game control panel. And this will allow us to log in and change the settings. So 10105 and then paste in my password and just click remember me. Then click on game services on the left. And this should bring you to your uh, Rust server information or configuration panel, whatever you want to call it. So we have a whole slew of buttons over here, which do exactly what it says. So let's first of all change our information. So let's stop the server. Let's go to command line manager. And here we have several profiles we can select. And you can see here, new server, no Rust Plus. And it says here, new server with Rust Plus. So let's do that. Let's select the Rust server with the app. And if you don't know what the app does, there will be a link in the video description and also an annotation at the top showing you a video, what it does and how to set it up as a player, but also as a server or server owner, sorry. So here it says our Archon password. Let's just keep that the same. Host name, let's change that to Tutorial Game Server Kings with one S. And the seat and the world size we can change here. If we go to playrust.io and click on map gallery on the right, you can choose a size. And then you can look at the map by just clicking on it. And if you want to choose this map for your server, you would just put in the size and the seat right here. So the seat and the size, and then click apply. I didn't change them, I know, but that's how you would do it. So let's go back to our game services on the left. And let's see if there is a update for our server. So let's do Steam update. It says, do you want to execute? So there was a update. So it says success app was successfully updated or fully installed, whatever. And then it says you can now close this. So we are going to close it. We are, for example, if you go to a mod manager, you have umod here. So if you just click on install, it's going to take a moment and this will just download and install umod by itself. So if you've done this uh, on your own computer locally with all the files, you know that this is a lot more hassle than just three clicks. So this is one of the perks of paying for a server. It's just a lot easier. So now it says here installed and we now have umod on our server so we can actually run plugins. Then if you are a map maker, you can see here the Rust edit uh, extension is here. So if you want to install that and use that for your doors and your electricity and your custom maps, you can just once again click on it. It does say here we do not provide support for this um, because it's not an official plugin. So it's always better to try to contact Kill You, who makes the extension or someone like Loan on the website Loan.design who's very up to date with what is going on in the uh, map making community and they might be able to help you out. Or of course, join my Discord and if I know it, I will try to help you out there. So there are a few mods and this is not the plugins, but a few extensions and stuff. You can just click here. We just installed Oxide. Once again, let's go back to our game servers. So let's dive into the configurable files and see what we can do there. We got the server.cfg. It says here the main configuration file. If we click on text editor, you can see that this is the settings for our server. So if you want to change the image, you would change it here. There is the button saying view website. If you want to change that to your Discord, for example, you would change that here. You can change the time of the day and night if you don't want to have it um, vanilla. How many times or how long the save interval is. I wouldn't recommend messing with the ports or any internet related stuff because they are the, the game server king connection still needs to be matching with what they have in their system. But there are some things you can change or even add here. So let's say you want to change the um, radiation to be off. You would go to 
you would just put on radiation uh, zero, I think it is. Yeah, I wasn't bright. Surfer, surfer dot radiation. So if I would like to add that, I would just put server dot radiation zero. And now if I restart my server, or in this case, after I save it, of course, oh, if I would now start up my server, there would be no radiation. So if you want to change or add something to that configuration file, that's where you do it. This is a file that contains a list of all the uh, admins. And this is a list that contains all the band people. So you can watch that. And there's also a UMOD configuration. So if we open this up, if you want to have mods and still be under the community server, you can change this from modded true to modded false. But be careful with this because there are some rules of what plugins are allowed to be run on a vanilla server and which aren't. Long story short, only admin plugins are allowed on a vanilla server and anything that changes the experience for the players um, as a vanilla experience is not allowed. So if we click on select and it says here, ensure that the question mark download zero is removed. So it just ends in dot map. So in all the tutorials that I said, make sure you change the zero to a one. In this case, make sure you remove it. So just do what the website says. So remove that last little part from the link and it should all work and you have your custom map on your server. If you're not using Dropbox, you can, oh, go back to here. You can just use custom map and it will just say URL and it doesn't have to be a Dropbox link. What does it say here? Yeah, so make sure it, it ends in a dot map. So basically make sure it's a direct link. As soon as you go to the link, it should start downloading. There cannot be a click here or click download or whatever button. It just has to start downloading. That's the command line at the, the mod manager. We have a file manager, which is like a very basic way of going through the files. If you want to upload plugins, you can just go here and click upload and choose a file from your computer. Uh, but I would recommend using a FTP program for that. So if we go back to my uh, server details page, you can see here FTP information. So I'm going to open up a program which is called FileZilla, which I will put a link to in the video description, which is free. So I'm going to take this information. The FTP host is this. The port is this. The username is this. And the password is this. Quick connect. And I just say always trust this. And here we go. So if we click on this, this is our Rust server. So these are all my local files or local folders. And I can just drag something on there and drag it in here. So if I go to the, well, once again, we don't have a plugins folder yet because we didn't start our server. But if I would start my server, go back to the TC admin game servers and just click on start we can click on web console since we didn't set up our archon yet and we can see the server starting up so this is everything it's doing we should take a moment and it's doing all the assets you can just wait for this and it should say uh server startup completed now, as you can see i get some hcr warnings and couldn't create and warning and stuff this is normal there are some errors going to be coming up this is also true when you host it on your own computer and every month there is an update and some of those errors are removed and some new ones are introduced. So don't panic. Just let it do its thing. It says here, server startup complete. Steam server initialized. Building nav mesh. So now it should be up. And this is unfortunately where my recording software decided to do different things than I intended. So I'm going to re-record some stuff and quickly go through a few things that I thought I already explained, but my recording software decided differently. So the server is up. We're going to go to connection info here and we're going to copy this. We go and go into Rust. So since I have a server that is in the United States, because I just asked them to set up a server for me as a demonstration and I wasn't smart enough to ask them to set one up close to me so I can show you that you show up in the server browser. Um, so if I start searching, I don't see the American servers or it takes really, 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 really long time for them to show up for me. So I'm just going to press F1 and type connect and then paste the information that I pasted and that way I can directly connect to the server information and it will just work without having to go to the server browser. So I want to make myself admin and I'm connected to the server. I'm going to go back to my website. Down here with the server details we have our Archon information. So we take the host and put it over here. Make sure it says Web Archon here at the top. We take the port 
and we copy our password and then we see at the top here it says server port we post that here then we select auto reconnect and click on save and just give it a name gsk yep and then we can press connect at the top and you should see here connected and then if i click on players you can see that i'm connected here as well so i'm going to right click on myself and do copy steam id if i then go back to this page and click on add administrator i can then paste that here and click on execute it says edit mcp to the administrator list if i go to the console and rejoin the server so press escape um, i'll do f1 and do disconnect then give it a moment and press arrow up twice to go back to the connect command just give it a moment again and it should say that i have authenticity level number two meaning that i'm admin and if you want to save that i have to do write cfg and then it will say config saved so even if we now restart the server it would still remember that i'm admin so now that i'm admin if you set it up you can fly you can spawn in stuff by pressing f1 go to items and spawning whatever you can you're basically admin so you can do whatever you want if you don't know what you can do as admin i have several tutorials there will also be a, a link in the description um, this will not be for a hosted server, but still all the admin things that you can do in game once you're admin are exactly the same. So once you're admin and you saved the config, so you are constantly admin when you restart the server. I think we've done most of it. So let's go back to the website so we don't have to look at that choppy FPS of the game. One of the last things here is to do a map wipe or do a full wipe, which is also the blueprints. There's a whole knowledge base over here uh, in depth describing how to do something. And then if you click on it, there's even more in depth information, which is also one of the great things about um, Game Server Kings is that they really try to have great support, a great knowledge base and just easy to understand buttons and stuff. So since we have Rust admin uh, connected to our server, we can run comments. For example, if I would type env.time00, you can see it takes a second and then it will become dark on the server. Um, or env.time10 would make it morning. Um, or any other Rust comments uh, you can run. Through Rust admin, I can also teleport players from one player to the other so if more people are connected they will become in this they will be added to that list if i go to console and go to server configuration i can reset the animals or the resources i can also change the weather um, or turn on and off the pathfinding for the animals to improve performance i can also see and change the server information so if you don't want to do it through that file you can still do it here and I have a basic detailed um, overview of how many entities and the name and the date created, etc. And there is a lot more things you can do with uh, Rust Admin, but there will be a dedicated Rust Admin tutorial coming up very soon. If that is up, there will be a link to that in the video description as well. So you know how to sign up for GameserverKings.com. You know how to set up your Rust server, make yourself admin do a full wipe, do a map wipe, how to run custom maps, how to update your plugins and upload and download them, how to update your server and update UMOD, how to connect with Rust admin, and also how to edit the configurable files that come with UMOD and your server. So that should be a really good starting point for you to figure out what else you can do. If there's anything that wasn't clear or you want me to go more in depth to, please leave a comment below. If it helped you out anyway, like the video, if you didn't like it, dislike it, but please tell me why you didn't like it so I can improve my videos. If you want more videos like this, think about subscribing. It's free. You can always unsubscribe if you change your mind. Thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace.